Let's do this. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful and for the faithful. I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal, and I'm here tonight on my own. Bruce is off uh, doing some work at Jasper. And um, it's been a long day of hockey for me. I coached two practices and one game. So, and I watched the Oilers game, which was actually a pretty good game. Um, I graded the game, and I didn't really hammer hard on the Oilers, even though they lost 3 nothing. It was a very close game. It could have gone either direction. The difference was goaltending. Saros for Nashville was outstanding. Talbot for Edmonton let in one weak goal. Um, so um, what can you say? That's hockey. Pucks round, the ice is slippery, and things happen out there. The orders could easily have won that game. Um, it was that close. So we're going to go with the two things I liked, two things I didn't like, and two numbers uh, format for this podcast. Two things I liked. Uh, first of all, I really liked, um, and I graded the highest, the Oilers' two big grinding players, Zach Cassie and Milan Lucic. Uh, since Lucic has moved to the third line, maybe he's got a little extra motivation, but he, or maybe he just works better with Strom. Maybe they skate at the same speed. But he's, he's just been really uh, hustling out there, hitting out there, and uh, he almost scored a goal off a nice uh, power play tip off of an Evan Bouchard shot. He's making plays. Um, most of the plays he needs to make in his own zone. He's uh, He had one great sequence where he uh, drove Oilers killer PK Subban to the ice, and that got a huge cheer at Rogers' place. So good for Lucic. I, I do think he can help the Oilers win as a third-line uh, uh, winger strong two-way winger on the third line. That's where he's best suited. He, he's not best suited on a scoring line any, any longer. Uh, and Zach Cassian also played really well. It was by far Cassian's best game of the year. He laid on one hellacious hit. He led the team with four hits. He was mucking and grinding all a night long. He was part of a really effective PK unit on the orders with Strom and Brodziak and some other players who who uh, killed off six Nashville Predators power plays. And uh, I didn't have the, the Predators getting one great A scoring chance in the power play in this game. So that's quite an effort by the Oilers penalty killers. And Cassian was a part of that. Um, he did so well that he, he earned a promotion to the top line with McDavid and RNH uh, early in the third period. So good that was a good game. And he certainly needed one because Cassian had not been performing well all year long. Um, I also really liked Devin Bouchard on the power play. The Oilers had three grade eight chances on the power play. That's it. On their uh, five power plays, they didn't score a goal. Bouchard was part of all three of those. Um, he drove the puck hard at the net. Lucic uh, almost tipped it in, and McDavid almost put home the, the rebound from that. That came on a really uh, good shot from Bouchard. He also uh, helped set up another grade eight chance. The Oilers' power play just seems to me runs better when he when he's running. And I know he's just 19, but he's got soft hands. Where he gets off his shot fast. He's just he he uh, he knows when to hold the puck and when to move it, when to make a quick move. He's just that much more deft than Clefbaum. And I really like how Oscar Clefbaum is playing at even strength. But Bouchard it is just that much better than him. I think running a power play at this point, Clefbaum's a bit mechanical. He doesn't know how to make quick moves, uh, quick feints, quick deeks at the blue line to get by himself time or a better angle to make a better pass like Bouchard seems to do. And his, and his shot is hard, but he, it just takes him that much longer to wind it up and get it off on net. So I would like to see Bouchard on the top power play unit. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense for the Oilers. Two things I didn't like. Well, I'm going to go with the obvious things, the, the goals against. I mean, the, the, the Oilers played a really tight defensive game. They were strong defensively in this game. And uh, there was just a couple breakdowns. Kyra, Jujar Kyra's turnover on the power play at the offensive blue line, which led to uh, the two-on-one where P.K. Subban scored. And then shortly after that, um, the Oilers, <laughs> there was a weird bounce. The, the uh, Predators cleared the puck. On uh, at the end of a Oilers power play, the same power play, there was a weird bounce and it kind of went into the middle of the ice and the, they ended up with a three on two. But the shot, the result, it was kind of an outside shot. And uh, it, Cam Talbot, if he had been sharper, um, he would have had that one. And and uh, that was the real backbreaker. It was a two nothing goal. 
and just with how stingy the Predators were being in that game. It didn't look like the Oilers had much chance to come back, and in fact, they didn't. UC Saros was, again, incredible in nets for the Predators, just like he had been previously in another win last year against the Oilers. So, uh, yeah, that that T Talbot, he just needed to make that save, and he didn't make it, and that was the difference in the game. The difference really was goaltending. Two stats. Um Grade-A chances were 7-3 for the Oilers. So they had more grade-A chances, more than twice as many as the Predators. This was a really low-event game when it came to uh, top-scoring chances. It was a very hard-fought game between two pretty good teams. In a lot of ways, this was the Oilers' best game of the year. They just shut down the Predators uh, pretty much on the attack, but they uh, were unable to score themselves. So, um, you know, the Predators did a hell of a good job on McDavid. It's, you have to give that team full credit. They just attack, attack when they have the puck on the four check, and they are very aggressive defensively and very smart defensively, and it was hard for the Oilers to get anything going because of that. I give full credit to the Predators' uh, uh, intensity and game plan. It's a very well-coached team, very smart and skilled players, and very impressive. The other stat is Oscar, is. 30.09. That's Oscar's cleft bombs time on ice. Now, a lot of it came on the power play and some of it on the PK. Um, but he was just, cleft bomb was a minute muncher. And he, he is playing very uh, strong hockey, even strength right now. He's reading the play well. He's moving the puck well. He's defending well. Uh, I'm just, he, he seems to be getting better and better every game. I, I And it's such a great thing. You know, th this summer there was a, um, some talk about, well, if their orders are going to move someone to get a right shot demon and improve, who's it going to be? And Clefbaum was the obvious guy because there's so few other players they could trade. But, and, you know, uh, and at the time, kind of my, my, um, uh, my, my heart was kind of like, well, he's not done that well. He's, you know, my gut was telling me, yeah, they, I, I could live with them trading Oscar Clefbaum. But my head was saying, hold on a second here. He had been so great in the 2017 playoffs. He is a highly skilled player on a value contract. He just he had a down year mainly because of injury. He just got to smarten up, and it, myself and hopefully the owners will be smart and not trade low on the guy. And that's exactly what happened. And a lot of other people were saying this a lot more forcefully than me. I was, I was more on the fence on it. And you know, a lot more people were saying, uh, "Don't trade this guy. It's trading low." And they were exactly right. It would have been a big mistake to trade Clefbaum, and I'm glad he's making good on that. Uh, notion by playing so strong he's he's back at his 2017 playoff level when he was actually a pretty solid top pairing defenseman in those playoffs good to see that um with cleft bomb i i don't think he's a true number one demon and that he can't i don't think he's a strong enough power play guy uh, in the end to to be in that class of defenseman his offensive game is good but it's not great nonetheless he is a hell of a bargain and he and um I'm not the only one thinking this. Obviously, the coach loves this player, playing him half the game like that. So good for Oscar Kleffbaum. Uh, of course, some of it speaks to Jason Garrison not being that strong a player, but um, let's not get into that right now. All righty. A long day of hockey comes to an end. And in the meantime and in between times, this has been another edition of the Cult of Hockey podcast. Thanks for listening.